Hello there everybody and welcome back to Try New Things where today we're going to do another little woodworking project. Uh, I was up in the, the loft up there looking through all my scraps and uh, trying to find something I need to work on. It's a rainy day here at the uh, farm and I found, I think, just the thing. I know it's cheating a little bit not using scraps to make my own butcher block but if I've got uh, leftover pieces of butcher block at my disposal what a great way to get a head start. Now it could be simple just to cut out a rectangle and call it a day, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to try to fancy it up a little bit, try something new that I have never done before, and that's putting in that, uh, what do you call it, a juice ditch? Is it juice trench? Juice slot? Is it a juice Groove? I, I know it starts with juice. Let me get my phone and look this up. Ah, juice groove. We're going to be trying to put a juice groove into our cutting board. And also try to figure out some way to make it easy to pick it up off the countertop. So stay tuned. We're going to be making butcher block uh, cutting board from scrap butcher block. Stay tuned. So here you can see what we had left over from the butcher block countertop here at the uh, DNT farm kitchen build. Might as well put it to good use and turn it into something and uh, that something today is going to be a cutting board. Now I do want to go big but not too big, small but not too small, and also maximize this piece that I happen to have in its odd shape. And I think I could do a 14 by 10 and that may work out pretty good. It's kind of a, a decent size for a cutting board. Now these things, cutting boards, when you see them online, they're, they're going for a fortune if, you, if they're handmade, and, and rightfully so probably, but they, they run 40, 50, 80, 100 dollars for a cutting board. And so I thought this would be a really good gift idea potentially for the wife, and she will be incredibly surprised uh, after seeing this video when she opens this up months from now uh, for Christmas if it works out. Hopefully she forgets it uh, by the time Christmas comes around, but my intention is let's play around with it a little bit and see if we can't make her a cutting board for a gift. All right. To make my juice groove, I'm going to use this bullnose bit, and I think it's half inch, but it's the only bullnose I have, so that's going to be our juice groove. Just got to set up the router. All right, honest truth, this prison door looking box that I built out of scrap wood is a jig. Now, I'll be honest, this is the most time I've spent on this project so far. It's probably taken me 45 minutes to cobble this thing together. But what I want to do is provide an outside track for the plunge router to follow so that my uh, juice groove is consistent all the way around. So that gap in the middle looks like a prison door. Let me grab the cutting board. There, it sits inside. So the actual bit is three and a half inches in from the edge of the router base and I want to put my juice groove centered one inch in so I've created this box with a two and a half inch offset all the way around and hopefully that'll put my uh, juice groove about one inch in all the way around so let's uh, let's get the camera back up on the stand and give this thing a try fingers crossed Okay, first impressions, I'm pretty pleased with the juice groove. Looks pretty consistent, no tear out, no burn out. If I were going to make another one of these jig boxes, I would probably leave the corners out. 
You can see in this corner, no chips. Where I've got a corner corner, uh, the chips build up. And that can get in between your, your router base and the uh, sidewall. But not bad for my first try doing a juice groove. So let's move on to uh, something else kind of fancy, hopefully. So now that we got the juice groove all done, what we want to do on the ends is do an indentation to make it easier to pick this up off the table. So what I've got here is my router table. And uh, I've got kind of a convex bit ready to go. And what I got the two stoppers there for is because I don't want it to go all the way across. I want it to be uh, in from each end. So I'm going to do a little bit at a time and see how this turns out. Hopefully I uh, don't wreck my cutting board. But uh, yeah, let's fire this thing up and try it out. Here we are with the first pass. It's not quite deep enough to get your fingers in yet, but I want to go a little bit at a time. So I'm going to do both ends, raise it, do both ends, raise it, do both ends again. But uh, I'll check back in with you once I get it to the height that I want it to be. There we go, our final pass. That's uh, more than enough to get your fingers in. Pick it up off the table. So I think I'm happy with that. It's time to move on to sanding. I was wondering the best way to sand inside of that juice groove. And I was surfing on Amazon like I like to do and I came across this particular product here. So what it is, is flexible contour sanding grip set and they come in different diameters and I'm hoping since I went with half inch to make the juice groove that the half inch one that comes with the kit uh, will be uh, a nice add to the shop to make it easy to do the sanding. So here is the half inch unit and if you look at it from its side you can see a nice contour half inch that you wrap your sandpaper over to facilitate sanding that particular groove. Just back and forth. Now this is made of rubber, so it does have some give to it and some comfort to it. On the other end, if you're doing like a uh, half inch dowel, there's a concave version. Now how you keep your sandpaper in that, I guess you just put it in and use pressure to keep it in there. But anyway, we're gonna be using uh, this side to sand our juice groove. And we're gonna do that first before we sand the rest of the board. So we're gonna be starting with 100 grit and work our way up to 400 grit, sanding each of these uh, juice grooves. So just take a piece of sandpaper, insert my little unit here that I got on uh, Amazon, and away we go. And that is working extremely well. Now to get into the corners, I'll probably still have to just uh, use the corner of a piece of sandpaper and do it by finger. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to try another new product, this Honeywood by Total Boat, which is food safe and uh, meant for cutting board surfaces. So stay tuned, we're going to try that out at the end of the video. Alright, now I'm done with the 120 and 240. What I'm going to do at this point is wet the surface and then let it dry to raise the grain. Start back in with 240 again and then go up and grain from there on the surface.
So what do you say we give this Total Boat Wood Honey a shot on the uh, cutting board? Never used it before, but uh, from what I gather, I think you just apply it liberally and then wipe it down and you're done. And I'm assuming over the course of time you'll have to reapply it like most cutting board finishes. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get a rag and we're going to try the wood honey on the cutting board. Make sure we get down in that uh, juice groove. The juice groove is doing a good job of catching the total boat. So there is a liberal application of total boat wood honey. I'm just going to leave that a little while. Then I'm going to come back and wipe it down. So there we go, final product. What do you think, folks? First time making a cutting board, first time making a juice groove, first time using those fancy contoured grips for sanding, and first time using Total Boat Wood Honey. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time in the next video, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.